I've got a heater here that the service system was light was on. We reset it. We're under the belief that the exhaust temperature is running real high on this thing. To check the stack temperature, the cool is on. We just hold that button down, and after five seconds, it's going to display the temperature. We're up to 312 degrees. Again, that's just running too hot. My tech said when he was here a couple days ago, we weren't sure, but it was running about 345. So we want to go ahead. We're going to take off the cover of this heater, disconnect it, and pull it and remove it, and bring it to the shop. Take the screws off and get the cover off. We've shut off the gas, disconnected the gas line. Another evidence of high exhaust temperature, the paint on the exhaust of this thing, you can see it's worn off. And then we're going to disconnect this electrical. We're going to undo the unions and then take it to the shop with us. Okay, we've turned our breaker off. You want to make sure you kill power. You don't want this pump coming on. Sometimes too, if we're not sure, you could take the lid off the pump and then that way if somebody did turn the motor on, it wouldn't pump the water out of the pool. We've disconnected the electrical. I've undone the two unions to get this out. Gas undone. Electrical's all undone. Let's put on a hand truck, get it out, get it to the shop. We're going to go ahead, disconnect, pull the top end, and expose the coils on this thing. We're going to need a couple tools, quarter inch nut driver, a utility knife, three eighths and a half inch sockets. We'll start by taking the covers off for the electrical. The wires on these are real nice that the wire harness comes out. You really don't even need to mark the wires pretty much well if you keep your sides on them. The pressure switch, just be careful not to tug on the switch. It's good to wiggle these wires, these crimp connectors when you pull them off. To avoid sometimes they get corroded and break and you can see how the wires just stay right there. That wire is off. This side here. Again, just give a wiggle. That whole wire harness is off, ready to go, and as you can see, it's pretty much well given. Which one's going to go with which side they have them tied together? Your pressure switch, your sensors, temp sensors, high limits. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and I just come around, take a utility knife, and I just like to slice the RTV in the areas that we're going to be pulling apart the combustion chamber on this. Next is our 3 8 socket. We want to take, pull off these bolts. They're just a machine thread. In order to remove the top from this, we just want to get a screwdriver, flat blade, nice size blade on it that you can hammer with. I normally choose right in the, between two of the bolt slots. Some of these can get pretty tight. If, if it's very tight, you might look around the heater for somewhere else to where the gap is a little bit bigger, but don't be afraid. Sometimes we have to bend these cases a little bit to get these things out. We can always bend them back when we, before we put them back together. But Sometimes that's required. You can see she'll start to split a little bit. And I normally find just in one spot, if you can get one spot started, now I'm going to take and start lifting on the blower. When you start to get this whole assembly out, I'm going to take and just take my screwdriver and start working a little bit too. We don't want this coming out crooked. We want this whole assembly coming out straight up and down. We can tilt it just a little bit. And I'll show you in a little bit why you don't want to have it tilted, because if you do, it has to slide through an insulating, there it is, 
Um, sometimes you can also pry a little bit. I try not to do it too much, but on these tabs, just a little bit, if you need a little bit of, just to help break that RTV loose all the way around. And that's all I'm trying to do right now. Before we lift this assembly off, we want to make sure that we disconnect the ground wire right here on the top end of the burner blower assembly. And we want to make sure that these wires are free, that all our wires are free, that we can pull this out, our other harness, that's free. Now we're ready to pull it. Just want to take in position. I like to grab it. Exhaust on one side underneath, the housing of the blower on the other, and just lift it straight up. Because the flame holder has to come out of the insulation of failure in the insulation, but more so I think it did fail because of the fact the temperatures in here. Condensation, scaling, sooting. As you can see, this heater gets some mileage on it. Next thing we're going to want to do, now that we've got the combustion chamber opened up, is we want to take, remove the front manifold. That's going to take a half inch socket. Manifold bolts taken out. Now we just go ahead, sometimes they're on a little bit tighter, we're going to pull the manifold out. We'll go through on the workbench in a little bit how to take the plates off of this, check our flow valve sensors, everything else. Now we can actually pull the heat exchanger or the tube coil out of the heater itself. And th this is really the simplest part once you're here. You want to be careful of these fins because they can be sharp. Maybe this isn't the wisest of me not wearing gloves, but we're just simply going to pull back to get it up over this flange, slide it back, and then just lift the whole thing out. This one, the little, there we go. This is your tube assembly. And as you can see, we've got some major amounts of sooting condensation lime in this unit. Just to be able to get another shot, close up of the abuse with the condensation running on these things, what happens? This happens to any kind of heater coils that run heat and cold water where it con These are heaters that are being used. Heaters that don't get much use, coils that don't get much use, or heat and hot pools, they'll always look a lot cleaner. But this liming and this calcium scale, it's condensation. Heaters get used, heat and pools, it's going to happen. According to the manufacturer, we should just be able to take this coil, pressure wash it. The next thing we're going to want to do is clean out this debris out of here, vacuum it out. Just be careful not to suck too hard of the vacuum and suck in any of the heater insulation into it, but we do want to clean it up. 